Last time on SV Full Send, as we wait for our sail drive parts to get delivered, we tackle a few other smaller tasks and explore local happenings around the Jacksonville area. You guys silly? I'm still gonna send it. <laughs> All right, so we finally got to Fort Marine. We got back our uh, new sail drive and we dropped off the other one. So about November 1st, we took this off, got it all sanded, made it nice and pretty. And then we found out that we didn't uh, seal everything up. So sand got in there and was making it grind. So we took it to Fort Marine on uh, November 4th and had them take it apart. And that's when they discovered that all this stuff was rusted, kind of degrading. Um, all these bearings here. You can see all these bearings were messed up. So the plan was to order all the new bearings, the new seals, and we were going to have it, you know, re-put back in, make it look like new. About uh, two weeks later, we get a phone call saying that they were on back order. So that took two weeks, and then when they got them, they realized that they had made a mistake. So our top of the sail drive is a 130. But apparently we didn't, both we and Florida Marine didn't necessarily check, so we messed up. And the bottom to the sail drive is a 120, not a 130. So none of the bearings and everything fit into they're, this that we ordered. They're much bigger. Yeah, so basically the difference between a 120 and a 130 is this is, this is the 120 and a 130 pops out like this. And our assumption is that they switched it to a 120 because our whole you know, that the sail drive drops into is so tight that a 130 wouldn't fit, so they swapped it out for a 120. We just didn't know about it. Ford Marine then comes to us and says, hey, um, you know that this sail drive right here, which is used but is in good condition, they originally came to us and said, hey, you know, we can order all these ports, all these parts, or you can just buy this for 1200 bucks. So since there was a little bit of a mess up, mix up about, you know, what the lower half of the sail drive was, they decided to hook us up with this sail drive for only $800 rather than $1,200. Same price of the repair. Yeah, same, same price of the repair. So what now we have to do is uh, pretty much take this paint down. We'll probably put it all together, put the new um, gaskets, seals, everything, put it together. And then uh, as we learned from the guy at uh, Ford Marine, or not Ford Marine, but um, Green Coast Springs Marina, we're going to take this, the hard sponge type thing, take this back down, and then we'll repaint it all. And, yeah. We'll drop it back in, do a little engine test, and hope to God that we don't see white smoke and get in the water very soon. It's been a long time. Yeah. Ready to get back in. It won't be as pretty as having the sand blasted. Yeah. But uh But we also don't want to risk doing another sand blast and then getting I don't know sand can, in the gears. You can kind of see in there without yeah. the shadow. Yeah. But so just to make sure we don't have another mistake where sand gets into the into the bearings and into that spot, we're just gonna play it easy or be cautious and just do it on the outside. I mean, for these, man, I don't know if we keep these just in case. Like, some of them are good. Yeah, you know what I was thinking? Maybe we keep try these. Try to clean them up. We can try and clean it up. And then we have, you know, instead of, if we ever need to buy a new sail drive, instead of buying a whole new sail drive, maybe we just buy a couple of different parts for it. I'm thinking parts, maybe not the housing. Yeah. And then this, this is all aluminum. We could probably sell this for scrap. So needless to say, we were lucky that we got it up here once yep. we got to Florida because there's so many things wrong with it. Water intake was horrible. You know, we had crabs living in the sail drive as long, along with fish. And not to mention all, everything else that was you know, wrong with it. We had oil leaks. I can't remember. What, we had a few other things. Head gasket, right? Had calcium in it. Or no, the heat exchanger. The heat exchanger a little bit. So we're hoping that this is a fix and we don't have to actually go in and fully replace the head gasket. So praying for no white smoke when we test this baby. Going uh, over to Leslie's uh, this afternoon and going to put in all the seals um, and then should be ready to put it in this weekend and then test it out. And we got to so. put in the oil too, all the transmission oil. Yeah, we got the majority of it. Yeah, so. Is that in the car? I think it's in the trunk still. I thought we left it at Leslie's. So. Right, so we just taped up the top so we don't get it messed up. I think we should do that too. Yeah. 
here. That's good. Right. Anti, I don't know, scraper. It's like a hard sponge. Alright, so we're finally putting it back together here uh, in Leslie's workshop. Hey! hey. <laughs> uh, right now, we, apparently the instructions, they we were just following the pictures before, and apparently there's written instructions and you're supposed to only go to the figure. We thought it was just made for, you know, pictures for every language, but... Uh, they actually yeah. did have instructions. Yeah, so now we're going through that again, and we need to clean the mating surface here. You want this to be very smooth? Because that is going to match up with this guy. And we've got a seal and stuff, so working on that next. That disc. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter. It goes two ways. Is there a picture that shows where this little lip is? No. So this seals the oil inside here. There's no issue because we're not tall. Maybe we put it on this thing first, and then down. Wait, wait, wait. I'll hold these while you put that there. <laughs> Ooh wee! Ooh wee! For all those people watching that, this is a Rick and Morty reference. Yeah. We're not just lunatics. I take that back. Yeah, because we like, sit on. Yeah, it was like in the boat like this. Yeah. Oop, no, spin it. See the prop? This goes directly parallel with the prop. I can't see it. Really? Yeah, but if all the bolts fit, then that, maybe that's the way it's supposed to be. Just double check to see if the bolts fit. Okay, you got a hold of this? Yeah, I got it. You got, you're, you're holding one bolt? I saw, we had two. One fell on the floor. Well, we gotta do it in that sequence. If you don't do it in that sequence, that's what the diagonal is for. Well, you can, you have to tighten them in that sequence, you can yeah. insert them in any sequence you want. What? You'll be able to tell once we can flip this over. Look, the two and the four is just that. It's the, it's the ones in the middle. And you're sure it's not these middle ones? So, Alan, Which take a look at this. See how this this line is rounded here and it's pointed here? That's denoting the front and the back. I don't know which that is. The front? I'm assuming that this is the front and this is the back, so it would be these two guys. So what is front and back on here? <sighs> Shafts in the bottom. I got it. <laughs> you guide me. Spin in the shaft here. That way we can turn this once this starts turning. Can't find the hole, boys. Hey, wait, did we even put that thing on? What? The circle thing? Oh, yeah, we did. I did. Um, back that way. Those ones are fine. This one's a little messed up, but they do align. That one's a little messed up. That one's fine. That one's, that, one's, one's messed up. that one's off, yeah. So we might have to flip the casket over. A bunch of idiots and we forgot how we took this thing apart. And then we realized that these guys needed to go in before we put on the gasket in the lower piece. Yeah. So it makes our lives a little bit easier, which, because we were like, why aren't there, and then we had two extra screws or nuts. What are they, bolts? I think they're bolts. Bolts. Yeah. And we were like, why do we have two extra ones? And then we realized, we gave them a part, uh, they, they gave us a part back that we didn't give them, so we had two additional bolts. Leslie says just next next boat we get. No and I claim ignorance. Oh yeah, and I have a service announcement. Do not buy anything with a sail drive. <laughs> <laughs> We're making enough money where you don't have to fix yourself. Yeah. How tight do we want these? Pretty tight, right? Yeah. I'd say, I'd say tight. Good. And we decided that we weren't drinking. That's why it took us so long. Yeah, we're making lots of mistakes, so cheers. Yeah, if it is smearing off ice. <laughs> <laughs> so now we got to put it in sequence here. And we're just going to tighten away. 
Oh, shit. Well, that's she's not probably actually follow the sequence. That's not, that's not one. One, <laughs> one is this guy. Get him, get him Which down is the rounded to touching, and then touching. Okay, so get him down to touching and then, like, touching the washers, and then we can... Yeah. Hand tightening's not working that well, though. Okay, Try well, then just look... I mean, you, you can still tighten the thing until it's touching. Because you're not applying any torque to your torque. I mean, you are, but it's not like Is that, that going to be too big to get into these? There's an extension. There we go. Crabs. I'm going to show you that guy. Such a light. All right, so it is complete. Put it in here in the tub. All tightened in sequence. Uh, unless I even found a screw that worked. This is where the handle goes to turn the water intake on for the seacock. Uh, we have the handle, but it's been missing a screw since we got it. The surveyor said it was broken off when in fact all it needed was a screw. So we need to find one of right length. We'll go to Ace Hardware tomorrow. Try to find that there. Um, but yeah, we're gonna go put it in the car and then show us what you got. Show me what you got. Show me what you got. <clears throat> show me what you got. Day two with our new slash use sail drive. Alan's putting on the bailing wire. Yeah. Right here. It's part of the step, I guess, just so we don't lose the uh, the pieces. So we'll fiddle that through on each side. Uh, and then we are going to be moving to putting on a layer of Interlux 2000E. We've got some left from the uh, keel and rudder. So get that all gooped in there. Now we've gotten this piece sanded here. Um, and just to make it seal a little bit better, even though it's got the, uh, the seal in there, we want to get that layer on top and overlap in it so it'll help keep the uh, the oil and the water in. All right, we're mixing the Interlux for uh, the sail drive. Three to one, popping this bad boy open and using a little bit of an electric to help speed it up. So before we put the hardener in, look at that. Yeah. It is. Doesn't look that great, so. Let's try to stir up. I think plus we're gonna add more stuff to be able to do the bottom of the keel. Another layer. Yeah, that's what I was just worried about at the bottom. After about two minutes of that, we we'll yeah. mix, mix those two. Yep. Yeah. Right. So we just added, you can see, the hardener. And the, uh, looks about three to one. Best guesstimate that we, we did the ratio. Um, now we got a, I got a read, but I think it's like 15 minutes. I think it's 15 or 20, I'll double check. <laughs> All right, been 20 minutes. Uh, there we go. All right, so we've taped up all the rubber as well, just in case we spill, because we have a tendency to do that. And the rest will get ready. The anode's gonna go here. So gotta be careful not to get it on there. All right, so uh, we painted the propeller as well in the nose cone figured what the heck why not let's get it done well we still have a little bit of that epoxy slash paint left so we want to get that done uh, but it is pretty dry right now so we're going to go ahead and start putting on the next layer which is ablative and that black if you guys remember from before we did two layers of black and three of red and that includes that anti uh, the dewormer uh, for cattle and swine <laughs> Don't paint the connection there, just don't paint Yeah, it. it's the anode that has to be paint free, or else it screws up with the electricity output and input, I guess. I don't know. The electrolysis. Can't yeah, the electrolysis. Alright, 
So, I let this uh, dry overnight. We only got those two layers on. And we're going to bring her up, slap her back in today, in through the hole. All right, hang on. Hopefully set her down. No critters have started growing in there, so that's good. Got to do that, put the heat exchanger on, and we'll use these little earmuffs. Put it over the intakes. Actually, going to need to do it on that, too. But uh, that should work to be able to get water straight into there. Saturday, December 7th or 8th, I think, we are got the sail drive up back on the boat, and we're about to drop it back in. So, gonna have to just finagle it in there. But taking off all the tape. As you can see, the engine kind of fell a little bit, but once we get it, the sail drive back in, we'll, we're gonna try and use a basketball deflate and then inflate it, lift this up, and then push it back. Should be a fun day. So, uh, we were idiots, we kind of forgot that when we took the sail drive out, the prop shaft wasn't in there. So now we're trying to take that apart right now, get that off. No way. That paint's making it real sticky like. I'm trying not to damage the aluminum. Alright, time to put this bad boy back just in. Hold that up so yep. I can switch my hands. Tell me where you want the light. Anywhere just so the people can see. Side cable and black pipe. The uh, sail drive forward a bit. The, the lower. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Push it towards the stern. It's almost gone. All right, so a bit of a pain in the butt. Uh, we got it in. Show you what we had to do. We had to take off the seacock valve. You lift up the stairs, so that was kind of a handhold. And then we also took off the ring because we took off the sea cocktail. We think that we can. Can you lift up the stairs, Leslie? Yeah. Um, and we had to take the ring off, but it's down inside of there now, uh, ish. So we're gonna take a break real quick, and then I'm gonna wipe all the seals uh, to make sure. No sand and stuff, and because it's uh, the ocean under there normally. All right, so we're rigging up on the boom, kind of like we did with the replacing the steps, or I'm sorry, the uh, engine, mount. engine mount. So I'll connect on there, we'll be able to lift up a bit. Do I need to yeah, it's dirty down there, but we'll All clean right. it out after we're done messing with the engine. Yeah, it's lifting. I think we're good, actually. So we should be able to put wood in under there right now, right? Uh, yeah, we can. If So all me and Alan did was we kind of pushed a little bit. Well, loosen the top and lift because this is a little jerk. This is coming in hot. It's really dark. It's been taking a lot. Can't see your face. There we go. It's been taking a lot to get this here. Leslie came up with this contraption. We had to put a hole. I'm going to show the hole through there, drilling that, broke the step off, so we're going to have to replace that. We tried using just a 4x4 four four and that didn't work, so I had to upgrade to some steel. We need to come straight down to be able to lift it up, uh, but we did finally get the sail drive on. Uh, now we're trying to piece it back together. It's been four weeks. We kind of put all the nuts yeah. and stuff in the bag that based on the I, port. I just got it touching the lip now. Okay. The bottom one. All right. Okay. Next step is to... Here I go. Here I go. Here I go. Line it up. Line it up, right? What's yeah, that? line up the holes with everything. Okay. So we do that by lifting and shoving? Uh, yeah. And then, all right, well, we, we or Leslie had shown this, but this ended up working. Yeah, so worked out perfectly, lifted the engine enough where we could just move it back and forth, up and down, 
So we're finally able to, to get the sail drive to, to seat into the actual engine. Got all those nuts and bolts put in there. And then we took, uh, then we, once we had that connected, we lifted it up again to make sure we had the right seating on the sail drive into the actual hull. And then we went through and manually um, put all the nuts and bolts into that. And then after that, we kind of played around moving it again, getting the actual engine mouse to make sure it doesn't vibrate everything. Uh, we had to push back and forth. So we thought it was going to take us a couple of hours, but this little bad boy right here and his brain ingenuity saved us a lot of time. Yes, sir. We tried doing it at first with a 4x4 four four and it didn't work out that well. So he was thinking and made it work. Yeah. So it made our lives a lot easier, made, made everything pretty much, yep. 100 times easier. So we've got to put 40 Newton meters of pressure on these bolts, hand tightening. It's not exactly going to do that, so yeah. that's something for to tackle tomorrow. And then we did the light test. We can't really do a water test until we drop into the water. So next best thing is what light, light and water test of what? Of the actual sail drive and the seal that we have to make sure that there was nothing protruding. Okay. So Jason went down, we turned off all the lights, it's dark out, and couldn't see anything. It was nothing but pitch black in here. So we're hoping that you know, everything's good, and then when we do the Newton meters uh, with the torque wrench, that you know when we drop in the water, there will be no water leaks because that's keeping us afloat. Yeah. So we're gonna go over to Leslie's and drink beer. So or tomorrow we'll continue. Uh, but good thing we got it in. It's taking a while. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more, like this video, subscribe to our channel, and help support us on Patreon. You guys silly? I'm still gonna send it. <laughs>